It appears we have a quorum. Uh, item one on the agenda. Item two, annual organizational meeting and election of planning board offices. The planning board members shall choose one, choose by vote, one of their members to be chairperson, vice chairperson, and one to be secretary in accordance with the Fairfield Planning Board bylaws section 2.3. I make a motion that Mr. Higgins become vice chair. I have a motion. And Mr. Second the motion. Mr. Violet, <laughs> Mr. Violet retain his chair, chair even, even for being late. Yeah, no, no, no. I got, I got you. You're okay. Don't you know at all these meetings, the fellow that doesn't show up gets elected. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's what happens. <laughs> that's right. You taught me that years ago. So that's that's my motion. I have a motion. And second. No, second. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Uh, meeting minutes of the November. Oh, we need, need your a secretary. Okay. Need a secretary. Who's going to be secretary? Oh, secretary. I'd be happy to serve. Okay. Yeah. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Thank you. Is that it on the? On the vote, yes, thank you. All positions are filled. So I have uh, Mr. Higgins as vice chair, Mr. Violet as chairman, and Mr. Mishu as secretary. Yep. Thank you. Item three, minutes of the November 1, 2022. Man, that was a long time ago. Uh, planning <laughs> board meeting to be approved. <laughs> I know. We've had nothing since November. Oh, mm. I'm sorry, that November 21st, not 22nd, of 2021. Oh, okay. I, it's a typo, sorry. Yep. That's your first mistake this year. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> track already. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Any, had, had a chance to look at those three minutes? Yeah. Any discussion on any items? Everything seems to be correct, proper. Yep, I did. Take a motion. Motion to accept. Motion to accept. Second. Second. Second, thank you. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Okay, now the big list of everything we have to do. Public hearings, none. <laughs> New business, none. Unfinished business, which is always a good one, none. Uh, any items tonight by the public? There's no public. The clerk or members? Any items, update on water testing maybe? Anything? Well, I, I, there's gonna be a town hall meeting April 1st and April 2nd. April Fool's Day. I'm not sure which where it's gonna be at. It might be at the Williams Art Center. Oh wow. If not, maybe at the Waterville Elks building, but it's going to be put on by the lawyer firm that representing me and a bunch of other people in Fairfield. Mm -hmm. They're out of uh, California and Texas. They have three ground people up here right now. They just got here last week, trying to get things organized and get things moving so they can meet with people. Um, Erin Brockovich was going to come April 1st, but she can't this one, but they're going to have more of them. Like every month, they'll have more. Yeah. Because they're reaching all over the, the whole state of Maine. Uh, they're going to get Albion, Freedom, Unity, yeah. wow. Oakland, everywhere. It's a bigger issue it's for all everybody. Over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they yeah. have a water specialist yeah. that's coming up April 1st and 2nd to give you know answer any questions on that. The the attorney that owns uh, there's three lawyer firms working on this, but one of the biggest one he's going to be here to answer legal questions. Oh wow! Uh, the lawyer firm in Portland is going to be up here representing us also. Yep. So they're all work together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to be huge. It really is. Mm -hmm. Oh, sounds important. I like that's good. They want to get the word out. You yeah. have you been on that site that shows the soils test results on the. Uh, on the D, from the D, uh, DEP website, yeah, the soils mapping. Have you been to that site? Yes. Real interesting how widespread that is. It is. 
The farmer next to me, Dosti, has had Department of Ag there keep a DEP guy there to test all his water, mm. filtered, they just put in fill, test the milk coming out of his cows. It took 12 months to flush his head herd of cows. It took a long and time. They're, and they're selling milk again. They're oh, also yeah. regulating and testing what they can do on this farm as far as what crops they can grow mm -hmm. and what crops are susceptible. And with the testing, they found at a certain level, mm -hmm. you can't do anything with that soil. Okay. He tried growing corn, and they found they only let him take the kernels of the corn, not the stalks. Right. Okay. Yep. I heard that. The stalks were. My 200 acres next door test low enough, they want to con my 100 acres next year for, for cow feed. Huh. They want to try it because I'm in a 20, 19 to 29 parts per billion. But they have to keep testing because it can change. I mean, they could take it next month and be different. That's correct. So. Wow, so. You see, my soil's contaminated because of the, the field across the road. Yeah. The wind blows all the stuff over across when they yeah. cut the hay and yeah. corn. He never even cut that corn crop this year, did he? It was worthless. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they got rid of all the cows. Right. They killed them all and buried them. What's interesting is the long-term effects to the people that are eating the game in Fairfield Center, the deer, the turkeys, hey, all of this. Uh, the geese that are in Lots the field. Of every, any wildlife. Brook yeah. Yeah. Hurricane Brook coming into Martin Stream. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, fruits and vegetables. Uh, can you eat the fruit growing in these fields? Can you uh, grow cucumbers, tomatoes? Yeah. They they've tested. They got some uh, squash and potatoes for me to test. I haven't got the results yet. Oh, okay. I wouldn't eat them, but They're I grew them just so they could test them. Fruits and some of those are, aren't particularly affected. They're claiming. They said carrots will suck it up more than just about anything. Really? Yeah, because so it's a rooted ground. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Lettuce, anything that's leafy that you eat, yeah. Yeah. they don't. No, no. The hay is worthless. Yeah. You're not supposed to sell it as mulch hay. No, because you're just recycling it. Or you're putting this contamination elsewhere. Yeah. Wow. But Thanks. because you didn't cut hay last year, uh, we cut some on the fly ash pit, but uh, overpopulation of mice, crazy. Birds show up, crows eating these mice. And a team of bobcats have moved in. Oh, really? That are feeding on these mice. And they'll go across my groom trail from Middle Road to Green Road, and there's, I mean, 20, 30 cats working this trail. Cause, I mean, you see them go to the edge of the trail, dig up some mice, go down, another mouse. This mouse population, which are eating the grass, which are contaminated, are now contaminating the bobcats, yeah. which are overpopulated yeah. because the turkeys are there. And the bobcats eat the yeah. turkeys. That's right. So, it's a big problem as we can. Yeah, it's, it's awful. awful. Vicious, sir. It's awful. You know. I got two piles of manure out back. I, they're testing because I don't know if I can spread it. Manure from your animals? Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they drank unfiltered water. That is correct. And then, like, I assume the grass is contaminated my fields. So. so did they test and approve this manure or not yet? They test. I haven't got the results yet. Yeah. Jeez. I got a company through DEP. They won't test anymore. But I'm testing a dozen properties to find out if I've got it in my front lawn. In my kids' yards, yeah. uh, my property on the county road, uh, Streamview Drive, testing all those fields, uh, Marston Road, uh, Belgrade, testing all my property. Have to. Because what if you misrepresent right. that this isn't contaminated? There's a daycare, a water daycare center right down below my house. They closed it down because they assume the soil's contaminated, you can't have kids out there playing. Right. Right. And contaminated water, kids yeah. drinking water. Water's a big It's thing. filtered now, therefore it's filtered, but still. Where DP filtered all us, they test us monthly. Um, but, that, but I drank that contaminated water for 40 years. That explains the way I am. Right. <laughs> yeah, at least you have an excuse. <laughs> See, I know. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, no, we uh, so item from the clerk. Um, <laughs> Sandy Marshall sent you all a thank you card for thinking of her um, and sending a sympathy card for Jeff. Um, so I just want to let you know she appreciated that. And then CMP sent a letter about um, solar and that planning boards may see more solar projects coming and they gave a little pamphlet for informational on you know central main power and developers and customers that developers work with planning boards 
So notification to planning boards that mm. they are still working with developers on new projects moving forward uh, that may be coming. So I'll hold on to that information. And that was it for information that came in for the planning board that I had. Okay, that's Those it. Yeah, I just had one thing. Go ahead. Uh, do we request this from the developers? Plans, yes. It's in our ordinance. So in your land use mm. ordinance, when a developer wants to develop vacant land, he must turn in nine copies of his uh, or his or hers site plan and overall plans for the project so that each of you can review it at home, uh, hard copy. Unless you prefer they stop, then they would just send it via email and you'd have to look at plans just on the computer. Yeah, they would just again, that. that would save the developer money. I don't know how much, how much it costs to print out of 15 sheets. It's the printing cost is really minimal. It's a buck or two a sheet. Because so it's not like a, printing. The big money's in developing the information on that. Document. I mean, there's like right. 120 sheets. Oh, I know. It's right. ridiculous Fantastic. to throw that away. I, I mean, know that. Um, yeah, always but, in but the, keep yeah. in mind that a project may come our way that is quite uh, controversial and everybody really wants to read the details and look really close. So then we really need copies. But there's a couple of pages in here that don't make any sense. There's a bunch of dots with... <laughs> what well, are they I trying to it tell us? Like, it was like a wetland delineation. <laughs> I was just wondering, you know, <laughs> I was just wondering how much that costs the developer. The if there's a uh, hundred sheets, I think it's minimal. Hundred bucks. Like he said, it's uh, the project is the engineering. Uh, when they go to print, it's just a matter of producing nine copies so that you all have one. I have one in the office that mm. is the public's copy to come and look at if they want. I mean, I can see these fellows making it because they get their money back. But the developer, he's got to pay for it. Yeah, but keep in mind that the developer's got to make copies for DEP, Correct. on the Board of Engineering, <clears throat> DOT, EPA. I mean, they're, they're going to make hundreds of those. Does that figure that's about... 978 and a half by 11 <laughs> sheets of paper. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, but there, <clears throat> President, you don't have any other solar applications yet? Not yet. Um, we had the one um, on Norwich Walk Road that he did his preliminary introduction last year. Yeah. He never came forward with an application yet. And so huh. that's the only one I know of that has come to the board and said I would like to apply at uh, the Larrabee Farm. Right. Yeah, that's the only one. But he has not applied yet. Hmm. Because the ultimate solution you're going to see in front of this board is going to be if we got thousands of acres of contaminated property, the oh, yeah. only feasible use of that land is to cover the solar panels. Yep. It gets fenced in to keep the deer out and the people and the copper thieves. Um, so the animals are protected away from these fields. And, uh, there, there are uh, groups in front of the legislature that are proposing uh, some laws that promote and, and, and encourage taking unusable properties for solar farms and do not touch the dairy farm properties or any properties that are farming to leave agriculture alone. So there's a real push to do that. That may be a windfall for Fairfield, even though it's really costly for some individuals. But to the fact that when they do these dirt leases on solar panels, they'll pay you 10 times the money you ever could have made on that property for the leases are 60 years. So for a lifetime, they'll pay you crazy money. For 100 acres, 120,000. Dirt leaves. Might be an opportunity for some people. Some of these people that are down and desperate and, and think they're losing <clears> everything <throat> because they have contamination. If you've got enough property, there might be a solution for some. Now, is there any way we can have a map drawn up so we know where those. So if somebody comes into the de development, yeah. we can say, well, let's. Those maps are online through DEP's website. It's all the mapping of the contamination. Of the, so it's, and it's town-wide, what they discovered, what the levels are, um, you know, all of that, which is going to direct how it can be used. Yeah. Because if you've got contaminated water there and you're buying it for a daycare, plan on a filter system. I mean, it just, 
And this contamination, keep in mind that uh, in the paper recently, Annabeck Water District claimed that they had five to six percent forever chemicals in their water. <clears throat> they were way below the standards, and they're pretty proud of that. So it's in city water. Well, it's in China Lake, sure. Right. All the farms all around well, well, I mean, yes, seriously. Yes, you're right. Seriously. Yeah, some of those did sludge. That basketball size was surrounded by farms. It was. All of yeah. us thrown up. No, I mean, one thing, too, that even though they had like 700 areas that were licensed, it's probably 10 times that much that got spread that wasn't licensed. Right. So and that could like, be you know. because DEP has struggled to find licensing for some of the areas that I'm asking them about. Well, did you license this area? Did you license that area? Oh, geez, we don't know. They, they really, yeah. this goes back 30, 40 years. Well, it's a long time ago. You get dumped away. And all those people have retired. Yeah. Uh, now, should we put something in the ordinance relating to this? Has this land that such and such has this land can't have homes built on it? Uh. Well, I, I don't think that we, uh, as a board that enforces an ordinance, are jurisdictional in, in restricting private property that's owned by other people. So if we were to do that. But I mean, if it's a hazard, I mean. But the hazard. Oh, so that people will know that this was maybe a hazard well, area. At, at this point, it's been publicized, it's in the paper. It's on the website, and it's, it's not uh, unknown or hidden now. DEP has got an extensive soils testing program going. They can tell you what area, what town, what street has the level of contamination. Some of those levels are in the thousands, but the levels that are in the 19 to 29 range, which is what my farm ended up being, a lot of it. Now, some of it was 80 on the lower lying areas. So those they consider to be marginal, and agriculture wants an experiment in cropping those fields to see if it diminishes it or what it does. So they're at the learning stage as well, Department of Agriculture with EDP. And keep in mind that they have water filtered every contaminated well that they found or they're getting ready to do the rest of it. Hmm. So Go one ahead. more thing, I'd like to welcome our new members this evening, our new alternates. So Dave Bernal nice is alternate job. number one, and Peter Lawrence, our second alternate. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome to the madness. Hmm. Oh, yeah. I love the madness. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yes, so, you did. I don't know if you guys uh, know to the 23rd, it's going to be a public hearing for the, on the one. Okay. Right. Uh, where is that? Right here. Oh, no kidding, town. Yeah. The 23rd of March. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I get that. I heard that on the budget committee too, because I'm part of the budget committee and that got leaked out. And it's at the town office. Thank you. At the community center. Community center. center. Okay. Is it here? This community okay. council's running, so. Oh, okay. It's council run. It's going to be public hearing because um, I have I have the packet yeah, before I left, left the council. I have the packet on what they did or engineering is presented to the council and on TV. <laughs> Um, there's an ordinance in there that force, if it's passed, forcing every resident to have get public water. If it passed the ordinance. Uh, well, you can't do that. You can't force <laughs> your uh, I question the already. Yeah, I don't think. Well, the problem with that is even if they, they run city water by your house and make it available for you, if you refuse it, okay. DEP's going to say, you no. could have had city water. Town, I don't serve it. Town's going to pay for the hookup from the road to your house. But I asked the question, is it legal? They only own from the center, center road to the certain edge of the road, rest of the stuff, oh, oh, the residents. Yeah. And that's why Michelle said it's going to be a public hearing. I know there's water line extensions being talked in Fairfield Center. They talked about it for a long time. Uh, those lanes are quite expensive. And mm -hmm. it's a windfall for the water district because if someone else is paying for water mains and they get a <clears throat> mm -hmm. that's a good deal. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think they could pick up, you know, way out of the center. Oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're talking every single house. The only difference if it's going to be uh, contaminated or not, they actually budgeted for every single house. In the whole town? In the whole town. And that, and that money has gone up. Really? Yep. Can't be. Well, think about it. 
if you've got a well water and you've got a DEP filter on it and it's testing clean monthly, mm -hmm. okay, uh, Kennebec Water District can't guarantee that coming out of China Lake. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how they could force you to come off clean water to get to theirs. And I'm sure there's huge money involved somewhere that somewhere somebody that's, make that's correct. Yeah. But you know, yeah. it's a windfall for the for the water district to uh, end up with all these new lines and mm -hmm. That's cool. It's gonna take um three or four years. Oh. No, I I, I, I don't no. think that that's cost feasible. I think you can bore a well and put a filter in it and then it'll clean the water and city water. But anyway. Uh, that's interesting. I just got that date. And thank you for that. I didn't know that was coming. No, that's definitely more of that. That's very interesting. Anything else? We're still on. Uh, we're done with the clerk. Thank you again. And members. Any other members have any other questions or comments before we adjourn the meeting? I just want to thank this to just to be here. Uh, try to learn um, uh, more information about what happens mm -hmm. to the town. So. You'll learn a lot the first time we have a, yeah. somebody bring in a, a complaint. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> An no, just like I told the council, my background, I'm former military engineer. No. I worked in the construction with the military. And uh, so. Yeah. I mean, no, when I became uh, chairman, I said, we well, go around the table and introduce ourselves. Now, what year was that? <laughs> Uh, somewhere in the 90, late 90s, through okay. the time that you took over, I think. But we went around the table and everybody gave some talk about themselves. And there wasn't a person that was born in Fairfield on the committee. No kidding. Everybody was somewhere out of state, some were up north. Yep. They came from down Kittery. And, wow. Uh, no. But you know, they go I around here. The I'm, I'm transplant from Pitchton. It's a Fairfield <laughs> planning board, but there wasn't a member from Fairfield. Wow. <laughs> Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? Nope. Uh, next meeting? Should April. be the first uh, week, first Monday in April uh, is when I'm expecting if that application comes forward. If not, then I'll <coughs> let you know and all the members can decide if you want to get together. And I won't be here early in April. April so. 1st, I won't be able to make it either. Okay. So, <laughs> if that application doesn't come in or if the applicant needs an extra week, if I bump it back a week, would that uh, work for both of you? No, we still have a quorum if everybody else is going to be in. Correct, we would. That's true. Yeah, you have to run the meeting. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Don't, don't wait okay. for us. So we'll see if it comes in. I don't know if he wasn't prepared for this meeting, so. I'm on the Mississippi River cruise from the 1st to the 12th. Oh. Nice. Are you serious? I did that in New Orleans on yeah. New Year, on the, um, on 4th of July yeah, before serious. I got oh, cool. overseas. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. It was fantastic. But they take up the river and blah, blah, blah. Get your That'd game from take all your money, right? <laughs> 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 no time. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Well, thank you all for coming tonight. Sorry again uh, that one happened again. And uh, uh, take a motion to adjourn. One. Motion. Second. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Thank you. Oh, big man. Animal. <laughs>